more recently, the heroin that's out there is often cut with uh, fentanyl or with other ingredients. And so when people actually do heroin, it's because they want to go down. It's a downer. Hello, everybody. My name is Pej. I'm a drug interventionist. I specialize in helping people with drug addiction, with alcoholism, and with mental health. Today, we're going to talk about heroin. So what are different types of heroin? Well, heroin comes in different forms. Sometimes it comes in a rock form, sometimes in a powdered form. On the East Coast, there is a white powdered form. It's called China White. That is mostly found in, um, in America on the East Coast. And then on the West Coast, there are more, it's black tar. There's also a brown form of heroin too. So where does heroin originate from? Obviously it comes from the poppy plant. It is a, an opiate. Um, that there, it's all over the world. There's parts of Asia where they produce, mass produce a lot of heroin. Also Afghanistan, Turkey, and Mexico. So how do you tell the difference between different types of heroin? Well, obviously, you know, if you're on the East Coast and you're obtaining heroin, usually it will look white. It's China white. Um, that's what they call it. On the West Coast, the most popular form of heroin is black tar heroin. It looks like black tar, literally. Uh, sometimes there is brown or black heroin that's in a powdered form, but sometimes it looks more pasty um, and it can come in different shapes and forms, you know, like sometimes a little ball, sometimes a little chip, a little square, things like that. So that's how you can kind of tell the difference. Now, I, I do want to say like heroin's been, you know, been being used for countless years, many, many, many uh, decades. But more recently, the heroin that's out there is often cut with uh, fentanyl or with other ingredients. Um, but definitely fentanyl. Right now, when people think that they're getting heroin, a lot of times it, some of it might be heroin, but a lot of it might be fentanyl. And the reason that it's being cut with that is because they want to give it a like, more potency, basically make it more powerful for whoever's trying to get it to use it. So what are the effects of each type of heroin? Heroin basically sedates you. It makes you, uh, it puts you in this state of euphoria, bliss. I mean, it's, it's sort of a uh, it's, it's hard to say it's like a warm hug like you just want to just relax and, and you're in the most relaxed state that one could be in see opium it's all derived from obviously opiates opium and and so when people actually do heroin it's because they want to go down it's a downer and it makes you just very very relaxed and and just kind of chill you know to the point where you don't have to there's no worries in the world anymore you can just do it and and sit there and kind of just be mush so is one more form of heroin dangerous than another? Again, you know, depending, see, you can overdose on heroin. This happens quite often. It's been happening. If somebody takes a little bit too much or its potency level is a little bit too high, um, it can get you more high to the point where you overdose. Now, an overdose can go in different directions. Sometimes somebody can overdose. They need to be hospitalized. Uh, there is Narcan, which some people will sometimes become narcan if somebody's around that happens to find them. If the paramedics come because they're called because somebody looks like they're overdosed and they're non-responsive, and then it could uh, affect you in that sense. Uh, some people, when it comes to just regular heroin, when people usually smoke it, you, you don't overdose, so it's potent, but they continue to keep smoking it to keep getting that, that powerful feel from it. But intravenously shooting heroin can definitely uh, send you in many different directions. It can create an overdose, and by that, it could either be fatal, like to the point where you, you, know, you might end up hospitalized or you might actually pass away as a result of it. So yes, there are different strengths to the heroin, but again, these days when it comes to heroin, there's really not that much regular heroin that is being used on a national level. It is, uh, the majority of it is cut with fentanyl. So what are the odds of dying from your first, if you were to shoot heroin intravenously into your vein, into your arm, um, or another part of your body? The odds are, are very high. Uh, you, you could definitely, you know, die. Like this could just happen, depending on if you, uh, again, overshoot the mark, if you use more than what, what you actually thought was going to work on you. Um, it could happen the first time. It could happen after 10 tries. It could, uh, it happens quite often for a regular heroin user. They will overdose a lot. Uh, a lot of heroin addicts do not make it. They do not get to live long lives. You know, it, there are, yes, there have been people in the past that were longtime heroin users, but they're few and far between. The majority of people that get into heroin use never get out. 
or they will attempt to get off of it and then they'll go in other directions like trying to get on methadone and being uh, dependent upon methadone, which is even harder to get off of than heroin. But for the most part, it is very deadly. So does Kratom work to get off of heroin? So a lot of people, when they know that their heroin addiction is a little bit too much or they, they need to get off of it, they might detox themselves or go to an actual detox. And then, you know, there's the old ideas that keep lingering around with uh, opiate use. They, they remember what opiates were like. It's quite a captivating feeling. They can't get enough of it and they don't know how to live life without it. So they, they then think, if I do heroin again, I'm going to be addicted to heroin. I'm going to experience the withdrawals. I don't want to do all of that. So they'll start to uh, do other, other drugs that are heroin-like. Like they basically feel like opiates, but they're not. A kratom is one of them. It's a very, very popular you know, substance that people will use um, to kind of get that same feel that they do from heroin. Also, you know, a lot of people that are in, let's say, for a halfway house of sober living or even some treatment centers know that when they're getting a urine, like a urinalysis test is being taken, that they're not going to be, they sometimes don't check for Kratom. So they will do this drug. So they actually uh, don't opt positive for it because a lot of drug tests don't actually test for Kratom. But yes, it definitely, it has a, a an opiate-like feel. And, and people will do Kratom often to get off of heroin or not to go back. Okay, so if you or someone you know is struggling with heroin addiction, which many people are on a national level, please reach out to us. We, uh, you, know, you can reach out to me directly. I will take your call. I would love to be able to help in any way I possibly can, whether it's you or a loved one. Um, if you know somebody who's struggling with heroin addiction, we want to save lives. There's a lot of people that are losing their lives because of heroin slash fentanyl. I mean, it, 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 for whatever reason, if you know somebody that really needs help, please do not hesitate. The phone number is right here on the screen. You can call me at any given time, and I promise you I will get back to you.